Mathematica 9 is a major new version of the world's leading computational software. In this screencast, I'm going to give a quick tour of a handful of the new features. Lots of short-term and long-term R&D projects have come to fruition in this release, in all over 400 significant new capabilities. Whether you're a biologist or engineer, software developer or financial analyst, physicist or statistician, there are new capabilities to extend the power of Mathematica in your field. But let's start with something which affects everyone. One of our current goals is to make Mathematica the easiest computation system in the world to use. Well, that's an ambitious goal to achieve without compromising on the power of Mathematica, especially as we continue to add to its functionality. One of the first innovations to support this aim was added in Mathematica 8 with the linguistic input. Well, let's use that now and ask for 100 random numbers from 10 to 20. My linguistic input is translated into formal Mathematica for me and calculated. Well, that's great if you don't know where to start. But now, below the output, you see a major innovation which is new to Mathematica 9, the next computation suggestions bar, which is part of the new predictive interface. This helps you figure out where to go next. It has analysed the output and how I got here, and predicted some actions that I might want to do. You can see that as I continue to explore, it is constantly making appropriate suggestions for possible next steps, without me needing to know the command name, or even what Mathematica is capable of, let alone the details of the syntax. Best predictions are listed immediately, more suggestions are a click away, and it discreetly disappears if I don't want to use it. And here's the really clever bit. After I've built up a sequence of steps, I can click Roll Up, and it will take all of those steps and construct a program that will do the whole sequence in one go. Predictive point-and-click operation and the linguistic control work in perfect harmony with the formal programming language. Ease of use costs you nothing in terms of retaining history or building up more complex tasks. Thousands of prediction rules have been implemented. We're not just talking about a handful of obvious cases. There's nothing close to this functionality in any other system. There are other usability enhancements, such as the new predictive command completion and additional syntax colouring, but this is the most profound. Use it to teach you Mathematica, to save you time, or just to muddle through when you don't know what to do. Behind these interface improvements lie a huge collection of new computational capabilities. One recent trend that continues is building coherent statistics frameworks that bring together data science and statistical model development in a fully integrated way. Mathematica 8 already had the largest collection of distributions in any one system, and yet more have been added, but an important concept was the ability to symbolically describe more complex scenarios using these built-in distributions as building blocks, and then compute easily with this new description. Well, we've extended this idea to include reliability analysis, survival analysis, random processes including queuing processes and Markov chains. There's also wide-ranging support for new data models such as weighted data, sensor data and temporal data. The great challenge hasn't been to add the functionality, but to design it in such a way that it integrates smoothly with the existing functionality. Let me show you a couple of examples of this in action. This is a simple reliability block diagram for a car. It describes how the car fails if the wheels fail or the engine fails, but it needs both the brake systems to fail at once before it stops working. If each of these has a known failure distribution, then what can we know about the system as a whole? Well, by describing the relationships using Mathematica's symbolic logic handling, and then listing the knowledge that we have on each component, in this case using built-in distributions, but it could easily have been with experimental data, we can immediately declare a new reliability distribution for the vehicle as a whole. I can then use that new distribution just like built-in ones. I can ask questions like what's the mean time to failure, or the probability of a certain event, in this case that a car lasts 10 years without failing, and to do simulations on the data. What would otherwise have been complicated analysis tasks have been reduced to a simple workflow by applying automated computation to open-ended symbolic descriptions of the scenario. Reliability analysis is important to design engineers, safety analysts, resource planners and many other fields. Here's a simple example from a survival analysis. 191 high school boys were asked at what age they first tried marijuana. Possible responses include, I tried it at age T, I've never tried it, or I don't remember when I first tried it. The result is what's called censored data. We can see it visualised here. For example, here we have the 14-year-olds. 20 people tried it at that age, but 24 have never tried it. That doesn't mean they won't, but it might. And one tried it at some unknown point before that age. So we have lots of uncertainty to deal with in that data. Well, a sensor data model allows us to capture that uncertainty. But once we've got that data, we can use it just like entirely known data. 
we can ask what the average age is for first trying, what the probability is that a boy won't try it until he's at least 18, and we can see the survival curve, uh, bracketed by the measure of the upper and lower uncertainty, in this case with 95% confidence. Survival analysis is particularly important in medical research, where trials end before final outcomes are known, but it also comes up in economics and business and in engineering planning. Again, the aim is to unify all of these types of data and types of analysis into a smooth workflow, not just to provide hundreds of disconnected functions. A significant part of the statistics landscape is the R language, but we can now bring together the best benefits of R and Mathematica using the new R link. I can declare an R function and then use it as if it was just another built-in Mathematica function. I can even use it within Mathematica's manipulate function for interactive interfaces. Mathematica users get all the functionality of R and R users get to work within the Mathematica document-centered interface. We're working hard to put Mathematica at the center of all forms of data science and statistics. Okay, on to other topics. There's a whole framework of new time series functionality, including stochastic differential equation solvers. There's a big collection of new signal processing capabilities, from filter design to application, and big enhancements to our control theory support, including more than a dozen new control system tuning algorithms and full support for delay systems. But easier to show in a quick demo, let's have a look at some new image processing. As well as a whole bunch of new nonlinear filters, there's two major infrastructure changes support for out-of-core image processing for use on very large images, which are too big to hold in memory, and also support for 3D volumetric image processing. This is a 3D image from a CT scan of an engine block, and I can rotate it just like any other 3D object. But I can also change the rendering to decide whether to make the outer layers transparent to reveal the inner structure of the object. I can efficiently slice through the data in different dimensions or remove custom regions. And following our integration principles, most of the 2D image filtering and transformation functions that already existed just work on the 3D image. So here, for example, is 3D erosion of that image. Another direction for Mathematica's image processing is content analysis. And we continue to make progress with general analysis, like dominant color detection, feature analysis, like this key point alignment example, and specific content recognition, such as face detection. The fields that use image processing algorithm development, or ad hoc image processing, include microscopy, manufacturing quality control and security, as well as more obvious fields like image and video device development. These enhancements extend the reach of all those people, as well as now including 3D fields such as medical imaging and non-destructive testing. Another key field of computation are graphs and networks and Mathematica 9 adds lots of new capabilities to the efficient graph infrastructure that was built for Mathematica 8. There are new capabilities for partitioning and cutting graphs, new and faster tour calculations, and even more graph layout options. Here's an example of calculating maximum flows. We have a description of the railway network between six cities with the individual line capacities, and as well as calculating the maximum flow from Vancouver to Winnipeg, we can also calculate and visualize how that maximum flow is achieved. As well as applications in logistics, communications and biology, one area of graph analysis that is very hot right now is social network analysis, and we've made that even easier with direct access to some popular social network APIs. Here are some data pulled directly from a Facebook account. Whether you're interested in personal analytics or sociological research, all kinds of network data is available ready for analysis with the graph theory capabilities and other activity data for regular statistical analysis and as well as Facebook, there's support for Twitter, Google+, and LinkedIn. Now, Mathematica's differential equation solving capabilities have always been important to lots of our users, and these are getting some major upgrades. One key feature is powerful and simple support for detecting and handling discontinuities during the solution, including hybrid discrete continuous systems. In this simple example, we've got an ordinary differential equation for a ball in freefall. But this event description here describes a bounce when the ball hits the surface. You can see now that the solution deals with repeated collisions without any additional programming. Of course, anything you can do in Mathematica can also be set up for interactive explorations. So here's the same example with some interactive parameters and a slightly more complex event. It's a ball bouncing down some steps. Of course, Mathematica can work in any number of dimensions. So here's a similar problem with a more complex three-dimensional surface. Huge improvements to our differential algebraic equation solvers now efficiently handle high-index systems even with discrete state changes and discontinuities. 
And this is also important that we continue to improve integration with the Wolfram System Modeler, where DAE systems are very important. Also new are parametric ODE solvers, which allow you to analyze parameter sweeps very efficiently and easily do sensitivity analysis on input parameters. Something else that's very important to physical scientists and engineers is the handling of units. Mathematica has had basic support for units from the start, but in Mathematica 9, we're taking that to a whole new level. Units are now automatically supported throughout the system. And Wolfram Alpha integration not only means that Wolfram Alpha data can be automatically handled together with its units, but it also means that we can use linguistics to navigate the maze of alternative names and abbreviations for units. Here are units being handled automatically in data, in solvers, and in visualizations. It's the most integrated and extensive support for units in any system of its kind. This is important for anyone working with real-world physical systems, but the system also supports currency units, including real-time conversion. OK, let's step back from computation and look at presentation and delivery of the results. There have been a number of enhancements to slideshow mode, including a collection of newly designed slideshow style sheets, which can be immediately applied to your content. Fade transition effects between slides have been added, and documents can now contain background images. I've just used a gentle colour gradient as a background for my presentation, but arbitrary images are now possible. Now one missing visualisation feature has been support for gauges, such as this one. Of course, again, when we implement something, we try and think through the design as fully as possible, so that we won't have to change it later. So this gauge isn't just for display, it can also be used for control. And we've also mapped out all of the standard types and styles of gauges and made them highly customizable. And here's just a few examples. And of course, they can be combined to make complete dashboards or rich user interfaces. There's also new system-wide support for plot legends. And while this isn't hard to do for simplest cases, making this work consistently across hundreds of visualizations with several legend types and full automation over style and placement, but maintaining user override has been quite a challenge. Our central technology for deployment of technical ideas is the computable document format. As well as the new content features that I've just described, and the new computational capabilities that can be embedded in the interactive content, there's also new deployment tools. You can preview how content will look and behave in the free CDF player or the enhanced Mathematica Player Pro, all from within Mathematica. More importantly for tools developers, the Enterprise Edition of Mathematica now also supports the generation of enhanced CDFs with Player Pro functionality, but which can be distributed royalty-free within your organization without having to purchase Player Pro or Mathematica. This means that you can make a tool using the full power of Mathematica and distribute it immediately to anyone in your organization without having to worry about limitations in the free player or needing to purchase anything extra for your users. One set of enhanced capabilities which have been added for such enhanced CDFs include developer tools for a full range of web access, including management of cookies and authentication, as well as asynchronous web access, which allows AJAX-style programming from within CDF. Mathematica 9, like Mathematica 6, 7 and 8 before it, is a big, big release. And the reason that we can manage that is because we're building on the integrated and powerful base of Mathematica. Our investment in good design and thorough implementation in the early days is paying dividends now in the form of fast and robust development. We can spend our time developing new functionality rather than patching over the artificial barriers of fragmented toolbox-based delivery or working around corner cases that weren't fully implemented in the past. While this is vital for our developers, it's also a key benefit to the users of Mathematica. Mathematica is simply the best place for investigating technical ideas and for developing technical software. Well, I'm going to wrap up my quick tour here. There's lots of things I haven't talked about, such as tensor support, the new image editor, lots of performance improvements, 60 new import and export formats, improved date handling, and more. There are examples of these, plus many more examples from the fields that I have mentioned, under the What's New tab of wolfram.com Mathematica.